Have you ever wondered what the Renaissance was? Well, let me tell you. The Renaissance is defined as bringing back ideas from the classical, ancient Roman, and Greek civilizations that had been forgotten during the Middle Ages. We will be talking about architectural styles of the past from these civilizations to see how they were, how they were used during the Renaissance. For example, Filippo Brunchelli, Michelangelo Bonardi, and Raphael Sanzio. In, in the first century of a Roman name, Vitruvius, were ten books on architecture. Those were the only books that survived from this period. They were deeply studied and would become a Bible of sorts and greatly influenced the Renaissance architects and thinkers of the time. One of the famous people who studied these books would be Michelangelo, and later Alberti would take this family work and modify it slightly and then publishing it for all Renaissance architects to use in advancement of Roman society. Vitruvius's ideas and disciplines were the structure of the most exhibit three qualities. It must be solid, useful, and beautiful as well. Architecture was believed to be an Im imitation of nature. Using natural man-made materials were important to him, as well as considering economics and abundance of materials readily available. His emphasis was on symmetry, precise mathematical formulas, science, science rules on proportions were clearly defined, and a use of general simplicity and a harmony laid out. He, he wrote and used the functions of building materials, concrete, mar and mortar. He described and inventing engineering, hoist, pins, and pulleys to assist in building structures. From the ancient Greeks, Renaissance men adapted the architectural order of Doric, Monic, and Corinthian columns, which gave specific proportion of and height rules for beauty and aesthetics. Also, the use of arcs, statuary, and water features were commonly used in beautiful buildings. Filippo Brunchelli was the first architect to travel to Rome to study the ancient Roman ruins. He studied, he studied them for 13 years. He would survey the buildings, measuring their heights and proportions for their columns, and the pediments trying to unravel their circuits because he was before the discovery of Vitruvius and the invention of the printing press. He would later cause a great wave of architectural scholars to follow. Humanism is one of the things that affected the Renaissance big time. It was thought that the developing one talent was to serve God because God provided you with those talents. It showed people how they could shape their lives through their own efforts and talents and, and qualities, creating their own sculptures, buildings, paintings, and their individual qualities. For example, Michael, Michael Angelo Brunato was one of the greatest architects, pieces, and sculptors of the time. Was born on the date March 6, 1475, and unfortunately passed away February 18, 1564. He was also an architecture and created buildings and staircases and other divine things, such as the famous sculptor Pita and David, which are beautified public areas improving Renaissance life for all to study. Yes, Michelangelo was a very skilled man from the very start of his career. He volunteered five years of his life to painting the Sinistin Chapel ceiling to honor guard, creating a new aspect for human dignity and using his talents to improve Renaissance society. Michelangelo's friends were really jealous of his work. For example, a person named Pietro Duriango, also known as a bully, punched one of Michelangelo's sculptures in the face and broke his nose. Yeah. Moving on, Michelangelo impacted us as an architect by showing us how you can get extremely jealous and take your feelings on else's, someone else's work. He also showed us how you can show your true emotions and skills and not being laughed at or jealous of others. Another example was Filippo Vincelli, one of the greatest architects, painters, and inventors of the Renaissance. He was the first architect of the Renaissance to break away from the medieval style design of the Gothic style. His inspired solution was building a dome 
building a double skin brick dome that would self support while under construction, using no center support in the middle of the dome. This was revolutionized by bringing back Roman architects once again. The Kelly used this technique in the St. Peter's dome as well. Filippo used Vitruvius' ideas that architecture was to imitate nature. He made the shape of the dome like the shape of an egg. He used a line motor. Ancient Romans were knowledgeable about it with its quick drying properties in his building practices. He used perspective he could have learned from surveying techniques he used while measuring the, Roman, the ruins of the Romans. Applying its principles and techniques to art of painting, they were com by contributing knowledge to art, the art, arts of the Renaissance by revolutioning in depth of in painting. He built an ingenious way to paint and posed some among the most renowned machines of the Renaissance to help with building this cathedral. Bruncelli, after studying the Pathian, he returned to Florence. He com competed in a competition to build the dome and won. Filippo's legacy was to build the dome using ancient Roman techniques, where courses of bricks and herringbone pattern were laid at right angles to one another. This arrangement made it up stronger in a shell that supported the lighter outer shell. It brought sense of pride to the Florentine people that man could create such great intellectual and spiritual creations. Some people wondered how big was the Santa Maria del Fuor. The dome is 150 feet wide, the world's largest vaulted dome in 1420, and still remains the largest today. With his legends to the Renaissance, to architecture of the Renaissance, was that there would never be the same again. Yeah. After completing the dome, that, that, that mainly that was impossible to build, but Kelly was a creative genius by Italian humans and philosophy, described having a natural ability for original inventions. Architect, architects were not viewed as common and low anymore, but regarded as noble. The profession one was transformed during the Renaissance from miraculous into liberal art. Filippo Vincelli passed away on April 15th, one month after the dome was completed. He was so loved, he was given great honor and fame for his work by being buried inside of Santa Di Maria del Fuar Castro No architect had ever been given notoriety throughout ancient Rome, Greece, or the Dark Ages. His legacy would change this fact from a uh, from point forward. A couple of people wonder what humanism and how is and how did it infect us today. Humanism is practically what they used to call religious times. In the Middle Ages, religion was a big thing, but in the Renaissance, people believed that training people's characters, bodies, and minds was important. People showed how religion could be turned into an art and showed people how Christianity affected the world and other things. Yes, people were majorly affected by religion. One of the pop people or characters that were affected by religion was Raphael Sinanzio. He lived in Italian and was an architect whose rich built and created rooms for other people. He was one of the most important architects in Rome. He was naturally obsessed with painting and being an architect and creating rooms and buildings. One of Raphael's rivals were Michelangelo Brunotti. So. Really? So people, so he was against my person, Michelangelo Brunotti? Correct. Now don't get me wrong, they weren't complete rivals, but they were just people who didn't like each other. Anyways. An example of Raphael's great work was the Vatican Rooms. He, Raphael, was a great person of the world and did some wonderful things and built a lot of buildings like the Villa Madama using his systems. Features and 
and architects in the building style, arches in the building style. Of the right, the Raphael Madonna, bringing back architectural styles of ancient Roman and Greek. <laughs> Now, some people wonder what his goal was for the world to see and achieve and show. Well, I shall give you an answer. His goal was to show the dignity, beauty, and nature of the human body and the human spirit. Slowly, the Renaissance faded away, faded away. And then people of their time died, and then that bring us to today. With technology and other divine things like computers that we can do our research on. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed our presentation.